Maria Sanchez continuing our, recover, our coverage live from the United States Naval CB Museum. And see if I slow down, I can actually say it properly. And I am here with an esteemed guest and his daughter. And the reason that we're here, we have Clarence Hammerson here with us. Welcome and thank you for visiting KADYTV.com. And your daughter, Carol, and I'll let you say your last name, Carol. Gerard. <laughs> And I understand you are a World War II veteran, CB, yeah. and that you built something in Hawaii. Yes, uh, we built the John Rogers Airfield. It's just on the island of Oahu, and it is now the Honolulu International Airport. After the war was over with, I think within three months, they turned it over to, to Honolulu. And it is an exceptional airport. It had four 8,000 foot runways. And the rest of the land, I believe it was the largest airport in the world when we finished and walked off. Now, how long were you stationed there? We were there 14 months. And all of those 14 months, except uh, one month to build our barracks when we got there. And so the rest of it then was spent on John Rogers. So were you, uh, what months were those or what year was that, do you recall? 43 to 44. Yeah. Uh, 43 was, to 45. 14 it, was, uh, months they... it was 44 to the middle of 45. Mm -hmm. And then we shipped out. And uh, it was, it, that airport was really designed to accommodate the B 29 bombers. They were being built in the United States, and they would fly out there and land on John Rogers. The crew would sleep overnight, and the ground crew would work on the airplane. So next morning, before the sun heated the air, the crews would come out. They had early breakfast, and the ground crews, of course, had gassed up the airplanes and put uh, meals in it and everything. And they took off right at dawn. The sun was just barely coming up. And they flew all the way to Tinian. Now, I didn't realize this about the CBs, but you would arrive places and then have to build your own housing, <laughs> and then you could actually get involved with what you came to do. I mean, that's amazing. It's like, wow, here, go there. Oh, yeah, but first you need to build that place where you're going to sleep, <laughs> and then you can get to business. Well, a few days in the tents didn't hurt us until we got our barracks built. <laughs> now tell me, why did you join the Navy? I was working for the Army Corps of Engineers. I was stationed in Little Rock, Arkansas. And I was a draftsman designer. I designed the German prisoner of war camp at Camp Robinson. Oh and the... Uh, uh, Walnut Ridge fighter plane training base and the Blyville, Arkansas B-29 base. So uh, now I went to the I thought I would get a field commission but no they, they weren't handing out field commissions because the Corps of Engineers took the attitude, we're asking other people, everybody, to give up their men. We're not going to keep ours. So I went over to the Seabees, and they took me in, even though I was only 27 years old. Rules were you were supposed to be 30, 
But since I had that background from the Army Corps of Engineers, they made a chief petty officer out of me. In addition to that, I had worked for the old Civil Aeronautics Authority, laying out landing strips around colleges. The government had, in 1939, had already passed a law that any college that would teach the 30 hours for a pilot license and they didn't have a landing strip, the government would build them one. Oh, so <laughs> I laid out the landing strips for Tarkio College, Missouri and uh, Rolla, Missouri. Now, may I ask, what do you claim is the success of your life, your health, your longevity, your mind? Why I'm here, 94 years old and still thumping around? <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm a self-taught engineer. I went through the International Correspondence School course. But while I was in St. Louis working for Emerson Electric Company, I went to Washington University at night school and got my math, uh, math background. And then when the war was over and I finally got home, I went back and finished the international uh, course in civil engineering. I, the uh, Army Corps of Engineers rated me then as a civil engineer. And then I took the Ar state of Arkansas engineer license test and I passed that. Then I was eligible to work on civilian work, and I did. So Moonlight. how, you moonlighted. <laughs> yeah. So uh, did, did you retire ever, or did you continue to work? I retired when I was 79. Oh my. I had, uh, I, I worked 33 years for the Army Corps of Engineers I worked in private engineering company d designing hospitals. I was doing structural design on hospitals in Maryland and Virginia. And then I transferred to the uh, uh, Virginia Highway Department designing bridges until I got 79 years old. And now you're 94 years young. My father is too modest to say it, but 10 years ago, at the age of 84, he was named the Outstanding Engineer of Tucson, Arizona. He's a life member of the American Society of Civil Engineers. And he was named that out of the 400 active engineers of Tucson because of his volunteer work for schools as an engineer. And one other thing that before we close, why don't you share with us what this is? Again, my, I think my dad is too modest to say this, but as a member of the American Society of Engineers, we've met another young engineer who is a naval reserve officer who, of course, been called back to Iraq twice and, and his him. third time to he? Afghanistan. He is Lieutenant Ray Montoya, an outstanding engineer. And when he was officer of the day, at the dedication of the latest CB base built on this planet, which is Al-Assad in Iraq, Lieutenant Montoya had the flag raised in my father's honor. And then when he came back from Afghanistan, I'm happy to say hail and whole, at the American Society of Engineers meeting, they presented my father that flag in the triangular box, and Lieutenant Montoya said from one CB, to another. So the Seabees are the youngest service. They only happened in World War II, but they're just as involved today. They're on the fighting. 
they're in the fight and they're on the front lines today in Iraq and Afghanistan and God bless them. Well, thank you for that. It was lovely for you to be able to brag because you are way too modest. And thank you for your service to our country. And thank you for taking the time to visit with us at katytv.com.